<sighs> Paul Dulek here, my main man, Mr. Dennis Screws, coming to you live from the Bahamas, site of the 2019 WBFF Worlds. What do you think of the place, Mr. Screws? Absolutely gorgeous. You can't get any better than this. This is paradise for sure. Even the hotel doesn't get second to none. True, true five star. It is really going to be the ultimate summer party, beach party. It's going to be incredible. It is, it is. So, we're here today to talk about a few things. Um, I think the first thing that we want to talk about is the common thing that we've been hearing the past few years. Um, it's that WBFF is a little bit expensive. What do you have to say about that? It's not a little bit expensive. WBFF is expensive. It is the most expensive. But I always say good things ain't cheap and cheap things just ain't no damn good and you all know that you know uh, you can't do what we do and nickel and dime you have to go for the best of the best uh, you don't walk into a, a Louis Vuitton store uh, Chanel and you don't say it's expensive you know it's expensive but the reason you're there is because you want the absolute best and that's what you get when you go into those places Absolutely. it's you want to be a you want to you want something that is premium and that's exactly what the WFF is. It's a premium brand. It's when you want the absolute best. Uh, I mean, there's a lot of organization out there, but there's only one WFF, and it does come at a premium. We will never do it any less than than we do. We'll never go for anything less than the, you know the, the absolute best resorts, theaters, anywhere in the world we go. Everyone knows. That's what WF stands for. It stands for the best of the best. So, you know, I, I say it's not for everyone. No. You know, it's like everyone might want to drive a Rolls Royce, a Ferrari, <clears throat> but not everyone can afford that. So there are other cars out there. And, you know, if someone don't want to do WBFF because of price, then that's that's fine. You know, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, like I said, it's for, it is a luxury brand. It's a luxury brand. We're never going to change that. We, we've we never stated that we were going to be the biggest. We've always stated that our our goal was to be exactly what we are, the absolute best of the best. Uh, you know, you have to put a value on things. Uh, for instance, you know, for, as, a, as a competitor, as a participant, as a model, why do you compete? You know, I mean, do you compete? Is it just because it's just something you want to do, or do you compete because it's something that you love to do? You know, it's something that you do for yourself. And if, it's, if this is something that you love to do, and if it does make you happy, then what value do you put on your happiness? You can't. You can't put a value on that. You can't. You cannot put a price on being happy. So if competing makes you happy and you want the absolute best, then you can't complain about the price because you work long and you work hard and you made a lot of sacrifice and you save up your pet, your dollars to come and be a part to do something that's so incredible. I don't understand why would you want to compete in some bargain basement competition? Wouldn't you want the absolute best? <clears throat> don't you? Don't what I should. What, what value do you put on yourself and that hard work and the sacrifice that you've made? Absolutely. I can't believe some of these, you know, you guys work so hard, you know, 12, 16 weeks of hardcore dieting and training and you just, it seems like such a waste. To I don't do understand. That. Why spend 5000 on a trainer, 2000 on a bikini? and all the other things that goes into your prep and you participate or compete in a show that it only cost them about five thousand to do the whole thing yes i just don't understand these people who can spend all that money and time and effort and then go and compete in these shows that it costs them more to get ready than it, the entire show. Than it costs for the entire show. And I don't I don't know why they come to WBFF and expect that it's gonna be the same cost to do something that is running in a in a in a venue that they rent for 
a thousand dollars versus shows that are costing anywhere from fifty thousand to half a million dollars to produce. Yeah, they would think it would be the same. I remember, I remember when I just started out with you and just knowing the expense of the lighting. I was like, the, the, just the lights alone cost more than their entire show. Well, people, people don't understand. They see the finished product. They don't know what goes into it. Though. They don't see uh, the simple things like just insurance. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's amazing what labor cost is when you are dealing with union. So WFF, we're, we're never going to change. We, <clears throat> our goal is, is still is still the same. It's perfection, the best of the best. Don't we're not interested in being the biggest. Um, we just want to continue doing what we're doing at the highest possible level, which is yeah. how we do it. And bringing it here is the exact manifestation of that. Abs absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. This is the, the It's best. the pinnacle. This, this is, the, is pinnacle the pinnacle so far. We just keep w pushing it every year. Yeah, WFF is the glass ceiling. It is. There is nothing, there are other events out there that's down here, but there's nothing above WFF. Is there something bigger? There's things that are bigger but there's nothing better. Like I said, this is the pinnacle. It is the ceiling. There is nothing above WPFF. You can't say, I'm gonna leave because I want something better, because there's nothing better. This yeah. is it. It is the best of the best. And I think around the world, everyone can attest to that and agree to that. Yeah. So going back to what we were talking about, people who are competing in these very inexpensive shows, a lot of them have popped up and a lot of them have actually started to kind of copy what we've been doing with um, like our theme wear, keys, even some of the lights that they're using, the well, mood that they use. I mean, <clears throat> you know, like anything, if you, if you are the best at what you do, then you're always going to have imitators. <clears throat> but that's, that's all they are. It's just, it's just a mere imitation. You know, you cannot copy a masterpiece. You know, and that's why the masterpiece is so expensive versus when you have a replica that there's 50,000 pieces of a replica and the, that will cost you 50 bucks and then the masterpiece will cost you 5, 10 million, you know. And that's what WFF is, it's, it's, it's the masterpiece, you know. It's often imitated but can never ever be duplicated because every how WFF is done, it's done by myself and, uh, and Alison Dillette. And it's what's in her head, and it's what's in my head, and no one else have that. They don't have that imagination, so they they try to imitate what we do, uh, and that's that's okay because, like I said, WFF is not for everyone, so there has to be different levels for other people to choose from. Uh, yeah. We have nothing against anyone who runs runs competitions out there. We don't compare ourselves to anyone, and we don't try to emulate or do anything like anyone. I think everyone knows. Um, we are the trendsetter. We set the trend in the fitness and modeling industry. Uh, it's what we do that everyone follows. We start we start categories that they follow. So many, even our protocol people follow. But we will never ever follow what anyone does in fitness. We don't look to to fitness events. We don't look to fitness magazine to get inspiration for WBFF. No, it, it, this is the brainchild of myself and Allison and. We're always going to be coming up with new and innovative idea. We have an amazing team like yourself, um, who you know people don't understand. It's like we lose sleep. We, we I mean, you remember myself and you staying up till four in the morning, being <laughs> creative, coming up with creative yeah. ideas. You know, and people always steal them. But like I said, when you are the best, that's how people operate. They take, they try to, they try to imitate. But if yeah. you want the original, if you want the best, if you want the best of the best, you know, like I said, you can't complain. You j it, it's, if maybe it's just not for you. Yeah. So there are other organizations out there that, you know, if you don't care about quality, you don't care about standard, you don't want the best of the best, then may maybe the WFF just isn't for you. So there's no reason to hate, no reason to try to slander. It's just, just go where, go where you're happy. Go where you feel you're gonna have the best experience. But I truly believe if you want the best experience, the best run, best organized, the best venue, the best production, nothing beats WDF. It's that simple. That takes me to kind of um, how 
we've impacted the fitness industry in a good way. Like we kind of raised the standards for everyone. Absolutely. Which is a great thing, but you know, people are hating on what we're doing and it doesn't make any sense. Well, it does not make sense because if you look, we we have raised the we have raised the standard. We we have raised the bar. We have put we set the bar so high. I mean, just simple things like you look at the class that WFF bring to this fitness industry. People can say what they want about me or, or my brand, but I've been in this game for more than 30 years. It's been like 33, 35 years I've been in this game. I've been in it so long, <coughs> and I remember seeing people going up on stage handing out awards in, in raggedy sweatpants and tank top. And you've never seen that at WFF. WFF has always been about classy, not trash. It's always been classy. We, we've created, you know, our girls in their tiaras, which, again, people try to emulate that. And yeah. this is the brainchild of Allison, where um, all, her, all, her, all her tiaras are handmade. These are all Swarovski crystals. These are not cheap dollar store garbage that you see. Uh, you know, the, the girls wearing sash. This again is all her. This is all her doing. And now I see other people are doing sash and trying to do tiara, but they will yeah. never spend the money that myself and her will spend. Who's going to spend twenty five hundred dollars on one tiara? <laughs> That's half the show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. Who's willing to spend $2,500 on one tier? You look at our mail, look at the award our mail gets, where this is solid crystal. This is not some garbage. You know, that part frustrates me because I know for myself and her and everyone involved, you know, we care so much and we have so much passion and want just the best for this brand. And people, when people just don't understand they always think that oh it's just about the money you're like if it was about the money we would make this so cheap to, to do and pocket so much but they don't realize that most of the time these shows are operating at a loss the difference between us and other people who are running events out there i've said this for years you know i've had the gnc's i've had the bodybuilding.com so the get bigs of the world who have tried to destroy us the NPC, IFBB, they have tried for years to destroy us, but I tell people, I say, the difference between myself and all these other big organizations, the small ones, that they've, they've pushed out of business, I have my own money, <laughs> you know? So, no matter how hard they try, they can never get rid of me, because I have enough money to keep this going for as long as I want, and that's going to be for a very long time. Like I said, can't stop, won't stop, no retreat, It'll never happen. We will never surrender. We will never retreat. So they've given up on us. And I think they've realized that we are a whole different animal from what they are. This is truly, it's a pageant. It's about fashion. It's about beauty. It's about class. You know, and let's be honest, we've taken that to a whole new level where now you see, when you come to our, look at, you come to our, you know, our contestant meeting. Yeah. It looks like it, it looks like a, like a red carpet event. It, you know, yeah. it looks like a black a black tie affair. All our girls are dressed so beautiful. Our guys are dressed so amazing. Everyone is so well put together. We've created that. We've put this class in this industry, and I think it's time that people start recognizing that every single organization out there, even the biggest one, every single thing they do on their stage today is what they have ripped off from WFF and tried to emulate. But like I said, you can't imitate the, the original. You can't imitate the masterpiece. One, it is the masterpiece. It cannot be duplicated. WFF is the masterpiece. So the one of the last worlds that we had in Toronto, I remember um, it was during intermission or it was a, uh, Right after the morning show, uh, we were going back up to the hotel, and there was a girl there in the elevator that came up with us, and she asked you, "Are you a trainer?" <laughs> so a lot, a lot of girls who are competing are very young. They don't know who you are. They don't know anything about you or your history. Um, man, you tell them a little bit about yourself. I mean, I'm that old, man. It's like <laughs> I can't believe it. Like Father Time over here, man. Damn. 
Uh, but, you know, I've been in the game a long time. It's been over, like I said, it's been over 30 years since I've been in it, you know. I always say to people, I've, I've done my time. I've done my time. I, I, what I'm doing right now, I have, I deserve the right to do this, you know. I mean, uh, North American champion, you know, uh, winner of the Night of Champion, uh, top three in the Arnold Classic. Uh, every year that I competed, you know, top three, top four, Mr. Olympia contender, uh, numerous amount of sh sh wins over in, in, in Europe. Uh, so I've been in the game, I've been in the game a long time. I've, I've, I've seen so many changes. Um, I guess some people would just call, say, a le legend, icon, you know. When you get started anyways? Damn, I was like Montreal. Like, yeah, I was. I'm originally from Montreal, from Montreal, Canada. I start, started when I was 17 years old. Now I'm, um, yeah, okay. 27. <laughs> correct, correct, correct. Yeah, no, but I've, I've been at it a long time, man. I've been in this game for so long, and um, that's why I always tell guys and girls they should know their worth. When I competed, I put a value on myself, and that's why I put a value on my brand. You know, I was considered, as some people would say, difficult to work with, but I don't think I was difficult. I just put a value on what I thought I was worth. So when someone offered me uh, a, a contract, a sponsorship, you know, I tell them, well, this means we need to negotiate it, not you tell me what you're going to give me, but you you have to tell me what you want from me, and I'll tell you what I'm willing to do, and then what I'm going to expect to do that for you. Where today, guys and girls, their idea of sponsorship to me is laughable. You know, I was, I mean, I was making six figures, you know, you know, 15 years ago, and here today, people aren't making squats. You know, what I mean? maybe that's why everybody's complaining that everything's expensive uh, <laughs> because they, they don't know the worth and they don't they well, don't cash in on it. I, I always tell everyone, I say, you should put a value on yourself. You should put a value. You know, uh, if you do it for free, then. I say I ask you, you know, what what what's your what's your worth? Then you say, well, um, they're sponsoring me, but they're only giving me sixty dollars a month in products. I say, well, you know, I'm not saying it, but there's your value. Yeah, that's the value you put on yourself. You know, is sixty dollars worth of product, or a hundred dollars, or two hundred dollars? Well, ask yourself how much you put into this every month to get your body to look the way it does. So I'm always trying to change change the game. I think I've changed the game personally in a lot of ways by just you know showing guys and girls just what I did and just kind of tell them how I think they should you know present themselves and if they go to a company for sponsorship. Don't always go with your hands up, but go with your hands down. Tell them what you can do for them and get them interested. Then tell them what you what you want to charge them to to, to do it for them. And companies are more willing to to listen to that. But to answer your question, man, yeah, I've been in the game a long time. Uh, so I tell people I'm not just a CEO, but I'm also uh, a competitor who competed at the highest level. And you know, where I eat, sleep, and train bodybuilding. That was my life. I I didn't think about anything else. You know, and uh, I never disrespected any other the, the guys I competed against because. They were all incredible. They were all amazing athletes, you know. Just to share the stage with them for me, it was a, it was a tremendous honor, you know, just to be around guys like that. And I find today a lot of a lot of competitors don't don't seem to have any respect for the people they compete against. You know, uh, I always say you're just as you're only as good as the, the the person you beat. And if you put that person down and he or she beats you, you say how bad they were and they beat you. What does that say about you and your brand? Just degrading yourself. <laughs> you know, so I was I always believe in just saying how great my guys that I compete against were, and, and they were great. From Kevin Lebron to Flex Wheeler, Dorian Yates, Sean Ray, the late Nassau Somebody, Vince Taylor. These are, these guys were legend. They're they're amazing. They're incredible. So I had respect for them then, and I have all the respect in the world for them today. I just wish more competitors, you know. Would, would feel that way, you know, and we had loyalty. We had loyalty. We had loyalty to each other. We had loyalty to our organization where today competitors don't have any loyalty to anything or anyone. And uh, I mean, that's what's sad. They always think the grass is greener on the other side. And 
I say the grass is greener where you water it. So you don't win today, you act like a little baby and run off and say I'm gonna go someplace else. And then you run off and go someplace else. Then you get your ass kicked even harder than when it was kicked last, you know, a week before. It's just stupidity. It just shows uh, where, how things have changed. Where in my day when we competed, when, you, when we didn't place as well as we did, yeah. we kept our mouth shut and we go back in the gym and work our asses off <laughs> to try to come back and be better than we were. Yeah. And there were times that we did. You know, we, you know, some of us would place not in the top 10, some of us would place not in the top five. We, it just made us work that much harder. We never walked away, we never disrespected our, our competitors, but we just say congratulations and we'd go out for dinner or go out for a drink yeah. or we'd meet, meet each other in the gym uh, a week later training together where guys and girls today, I don't understand it. You know, you can play second on a show <clears throat> and walk away the next day like something like it was the end of the world and be so pissed off and disrespectful, you know, to, to, to your peers and be so disrespectful to your brand where we've never done that. We, we never, we, none of us did that. We were always respectful to our peers and always respectful to the brand. Something is lost today. The, there's no character, you know? Um, like I said, no loyalty. Um, for me, and I, I know I can say this for a lot of the guys I compete against, you know, we lost to Dorian Yates so many times. Hey, hey, listen, maybe sometimes we might have felt like we could have been higher, we should have been higher, but we kept our mouths shut, and we just go back to the drawing board, and we just bust our ass and go back to work. You know, we didn't pick up and leave and say we're going here or going there. Hell no, we stayed right there, you know. Um, it's not that today, and it's so disrespectful, and it's, it's even worse when I see someone can compete and don't do as well as they think they should have and walk away from the organization that makes them and, and others I'll see will like some of the nonsense they say. How can you like that? How can you like, you know, an athlete being disrespectful to another to another athlete, you know, who works just as hard as you? <laughs> I mean, come on. You can't. You just have to accept it for what it is and, and just say, you know what, man? It's, it's, it's a war, and within a war, many battles are fought, and you, you, know, you win some and you lose some, but, but you, you have to do it with grace and integrity. And uh, unfortunately, those two words just don't exist today. Uh, um, to place second, third, fifth in, 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 in any of the pro shows we, 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 we would do, we would be happy, we would be thrilled for us going into the Mr. Olympia, the Arnold. I mean, a lot of us were just praying to God, I mean, just to make the top 10, much less the top five, you know. And today, guys and girls can play second and take little bitch fits and act like, you know, five-year-olds. Yeah. I just got no time for it. I just think you need to stick a pacifier in their mouth and they can just shut the fuck up. That's real. <laughs> that's just me keeping it real, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think what, like, when you talk about your old bodybuilding days, it sounds like the best part for you was to be with the... With the, the guys. With the guys that you were competing with, traveling the world, you know? Just having that that thing that we sort of instilled in our pros, that pro family, that the kind of yes. community, which is, you it know, from your, from, from your era. It was a community, man, because... We would travel the world and we were we truly were a family. We looked out for each other, you know, we asked each other if we have if every man has everything. And if we go someplace and something happened, please believe me, we got each other's back. If something is going to happen in Russia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had some we had some That's a story we had some day. we had some issues in Russia, we had some issue in in the in in the, in the UK in Nottingham, you know, I mean but it, we always we always stood up for each other. We always, man, we're a team. We're a family. And this is these are the guys we're competing against. You know, when we're on the tour, we're competing, you know, night in, night out against each other. Yeah. We're not. We can't say nothing disrespectful, man. We're just we're happy for the one. So you know, so one night I beat you. Next night you beat me. Next, I don't even be. In, I'm not even in the top ten. We don't. We're still on the road. We're still going. We're still doing our thing. Today. 
I don't even know, man. I mean, yeah. people complain about, oh, I competed, you know, three times in three years. I'm like, man, we, I've done, I've had years <laughs> where I competed in eight shows in, you know, yeah. in a year. Um, we go on the European tour, and I'd be, I'd be competing in what seven shows in twelve days, in seven different countries. This kid's a joke. I mean, <laughs> you expect me to feel anything for you? I don't feel a damn thing for you. I mean, shit. We're on the road, eating whatever we can to stay in shape. You know, and these guys have comfort of, of their home and their trainers and, and, and their nannies companies. and their prep <laughs> company. And, you know, meal being delivered to them. Where for us, man, it's like shit. Get eating some tuna out of a can, and just getting some boiled chicken breast. Too many prima donnas, both male and female. We, I call the girls divas. What do I call the men? I don't even know what to call them. Divas. Yeah, because they couldn't survive. They, they couldn't do that shit. They couldn't be on the road. They couldn't do. Two, they couldn't do seven shows in twelve days. Hell no. We ain't in no five star. We ain't in no five star hotels. And. You know, so it's a it's a different time. We did we we actually had love for each other. We did we we did we had love for each other because we knew what the we, we knew what the next man was going through. Yeah. So, you know. So right now we're what, a little under three weeks until LA. LA. Yeah. No, I think I think we're at three weeks. I think we're at three three, three, three weeks, weeks March right now, for yeah. for the LA show. Um, it's gonna be a great show. You know, I think we have some really good pros going going into that show. Yeah. Um, that's the thing. You know, that's another thing. It's like, I mean, when we, man, guys, guys, we competed so much. You know, where today, like I said, man, today's a different time. Things have changed, and I don't think it's changed for the better. I think it's changed for the worse. You know, these, I don't feel like guys and girls are having fun doing what they're doing. You know, I don't. Seem more like robots, you know, just going through yeah. emotion. Well, we enjoyed it. We enjoyed every. We enjoyed the training, you know, training in the gym. We enjoyed the prep. We enjoyed the getting up on the stage and entertaining the audience. We enjoyed traveling with each other. Maybe that's the key to enjoying everything. Just having that community and your pals with you. You know, not many people do this, so you know you find your tribe and you. That's it. That's it. You got, like I said, you got to find your tribe, and that's why we say WBF is it. It's a family, and you know, look, at times it can be a dysfunctional family, but it is what it is. You know, I try to just instill in a lot of these young cats and these girls just what we had back in the day, and just realizing that if you embrace it and embrace each other, it can be fun. It can be a great experience. And it's something that once once it's passed, once it's over, you can have those memories. Like I have so much memories that are so dear to me that I'll have them for the rest of my life. Even though you know I'm never gonna see a stage again. <laughs> but but I, <laughs> never you know, say never. <laughs> man, I'm done. <laughs> um, but you know I, I I have I have those memories. And, you know I don't have any bitter I don't have any bitterness towards any of my competitors that I compete against. You know, I wish all of them well. I'm hoping that they're all doing great. You know, that's the. I think that's the difference between now and then. I should say, yeah, now and then. Yeah.